The tale begins with a scene of an ominous looking red jewel. In the center of the city, a man stands still while others walk in the opposite direction. All of a sudden, the man held up the red jewel to the sky and gazed at it intently, pondering the truth behind the human soul. With a sudden shift in the scene, a young girl is seen heading somewhere. After searching, she finds her destination, the on-screen film club. Therefore, she opens the door and finds three people standing there. Currently, one person is betting against two others, where he manages to correctly guess the opponent's card and win the bet. As such, after paying up, the two leave and the victor returns to sleep. At that moment, a girl with pink hair chimes in and asks if the guy is Seidu Yakumo. She claims to have heard about him from her senior and asks if Seidu really possesses psychic powers. Although this man claims to be Seidu, he asks who the girl is. As such, the girl introduced herself as Ozawa Haruka and asks Seidu to keep everything she was saying a secret. With this, she begins her story about how, two weeks ago, she and her seniors were celebrating a farewell. There, someone suggested doing a test of courage at the old building, which is off limits to the students. As the four of them entered, they soon noticed something weird. Their shadows were moving on their own and had a monstrous appearance. Ten days after this incident, suddenly the students started to become possessed. The first person was Mickey, who is still in the hospital. Next was Kazuhiko, who jumped off a building and died. Upon hearing this, Seidu asked Haruka if she had witnessed Kazuhiko's death. He announced that if she had not, they could not be sure of the involvement of ghosts. Nevertheless, Haruka wants Seidu to save Miki. He agrees to help, and only for the cheap price of 25,000 yen. It's quite a bargain if you ask me. Haruka is somewhat reluctant to pay in advance when suddenly she notices that Seidu was cheating earlier by using a mirror. <laughs> Upon seeing this, she decides to leave and heads back. However, Yakumo, impressed by her wit, decides to help her without taking the advance. However, Haruka thinks he is a fraud, but Seidu claims that he can see ghosts. Not only that, but he can also communicate with them. Although he can communicate with them, he is still unable to exercise the ghosts. However, he can talk some sense into them. Hearing this, Haruka is not convinced. However, he begins announcing about Haruka's late twin sister, who passed away in a car accident. Hearing him speak of her, Haruka asks him to stop and believes his words. And so, they both head to Miki's hospital, where she is seen to be extremely weak. Haruka explains that she is getting weaker and the doctors do not have a diagnosis. But Seidu can see something the doctors cannot, the souls of the dead. On Miki's body, he sees the soul of four people and he communicates with them. After the visit, he tells Haruka that Miki has been poised by the soul of four murder victims. Not only that, the soul of the dead usually remains at the site of the murder or the place where the bodies were dumped. Consequently, there must have been a crime committed in the old building. Later that night, Haruka suddenly get a call and rushes to the train station. There, she learns that her friend, Yuichi, has committed suicide. There, she meets with a professor who saw the incident and discusses it with him. The professor explains that the site was similar to Mickey's. Not only that, he claims Yuichi told him about the four of them sneaking into the old building, expressing all the creepy rumors surrounding that place. According to him, this must be the work of a ghost but the police will obviously not believe this. However, Seidu is also standing behind her, gearing everything, and gets suspicious. Later, as Haruka and he departs, Seidu decides to walk her back home. But Seidu calls her an idiot, claiming that her life is now in danger as well. He explains that the one after them is a human and as such, she needs to stay close to him for her safety. The following morning, they both head to the old building, where Seidu tries to bribe the janitor to let them enter. Of course, he has no authority over this matter and tells them to get Takeaoka's approval. <laughs> the teacher they met yesterday who also happens to be the old building's overseer. Funny how that happens. Not only that but on the way back, Yakumo notices some misplaced dirt, tracking its path to find a bunch of stuff buried in the ground. This solidifies his theory, Takeaka is the one who murdered those women. Sitting at the cafe, they watch over Takeaka's every move, where Seidu explains his theory to Haruka. However, all this is, is a theory and without evidence, they can do nothing. Bait apparently, evidence is easy to get as Seidu grabs a cup from the trash from which Takeaka drank. Later that day, he calls out and meets with Godu, a policeman. He hands Godu a bag, who then departs. With this, Haruka and Seidu return to the clubroom, where Seidu is still guarding her. Nevertheless, Haruka has to answer the call to nature and goes to the restroom. But, as she returns, she sees an ominous figure. On the other hand, Godu meets with a rather creepy old doctor, who confirms that the fingerprints on Takeaoka's cup are the same as the ones on the buried passion. In action, even the owners, who were reported missing, have their prints on them. This proves Seidu's theory and Godu calls to inform him. 
but he is nowhere to be seen. He is seen to be in the women's restroom, where he finds Haruka's purse on the ground. With the help of some spirits who guide him, he makes his way to the old building. Inside, Haruka is restrained by Takeoka, who wants to murder her. But upon hearing Seidu's arrival, he hides himself and ambushes him when he frees Haruka. But his strike does not damage and only knocks out his contacts, revealing his left eye. Glowing red, he claims he can see the souls of the deceased through this eye. Oh, hey! Moreover, he laments that the souls of the victims are still suffering and wandering closer to Takeaka, who is terrified after seeing Seidu's eye and running away. At the exit, he sets the building ablaze. However, the police arrive soon after and arrest him. Not only that, he calls for the fire brigade to help the stranded Haruka and Seido, who are now trapped on the roof with no choice but to wait for help. There, they talk and Haruka reveals she entered the old building, thinking that maybe her sister's ghost was there. As per rumors, piano music was heard several times from this building, leading her to believe that it was the doing of her sister. Always adored by everyone, one day, Haruka decides to be a bit mean to her sister and while playing, throws the ball towards her but too hard. As the ball went out onto the road, her sister went to retrieve it. That's when a truck suddenly appeared and ran over her. Due to this, Haruka blames herself for her sister's demise, believing that her sister might have harbored resentment towards her. But Seidu corrects her. He claims that she has no grudges towards Haruka, stating that she was the one who told him she was in danger. Upon hearing this, Haruka expresses her wish to see her once again. Consequently, Seidu moves closer to her, grabs her by the face, and tells her to close her eyes. With this, Haruka is transported to a special place where she is able to reunite with her sister and embrace her once again. Although in tears, she is able to say her goodbyes to her sister and returns to the present, where she expresses her gratitude to Seidu. On the other hand, a blonde couple is seen with a man. This man is fighting after seeing something in the river, and the blonde man claims that this is the poor ghost that has been stuck at the bottom of the river. Nevertheless, this blonde man states that this soul can be moved with the sacred ink. The ghost's father will obey his command. Of course, the father agrees to these terms, and everything comes full circle as the blonde man answers Yakumo's question from the beginning of the episode. The truth of the human soul is darkness. Meanwhile, after some time passes, two workers are seen working in the late hours of the night in a shrine. They are setting up a stage for something and are forced to work so late because the chairman, an old man named Yuri, is arriving to check the progress first thing in the morning. There, one of the workers tells the other about the rumors he has heard, rumors about this place being haunted. All of a sudden, they start hearing a child's laughter. And the next thing you know, the ghost and the props begin to shake and break while an ominous black statue is shown. On the other hand, the next morning, Haruka goes to meet with Seidu to visit Miki at the hospital. There, she sees Seidu napping and moves closer to him. But he wakes up, seeing her face and recalling the night at the burning building. As he gets up, he states that it is bad luck seeing Haruka's face first thing in the morning. Regardless, he begins changing, prompting Haruka to ask if he really lives here. Seidu explains that although he does have a house, he rarely goes there and spends his time here. Not only that, but he has also lied to the school and gotten his hands on this room under the non-existing on-screen film club. Anyway, they both head to the hospital, where Seidu communicates with the spirits possessing Miki and tells them about Takeaka's arrest. As a result, the spirit moves on, immediately improving Miki's condition. Soon, she is able to open her eyes and calls out Haruka's name. And so, the visitors leave and outside. Haruka expresses her surprise at how persuading the ghosts worked. Seidu explains that ghosts were originally human and as per his belief, are clusters of emotions left behind by the dead. As such, he refuses to use methods such as killing or sealing them. As they both ride the bus back, Haruka tells him to wait for the 25,000 yen as she has just started a part-time job. Bert Yakumo tells her not to worry, as he has already gotten his pay from Mickey's father after telling him he could help as a psychic who specializes in exorcism. There, Haruka starts getting more familiar with him, but he is uninterested. Seriously, what the f- Soon, the Maize University's bus tops arrive and he takes his leave, stating that the contract between him and Haruka has now come to an end. Regardless, later on, Haruka head to her job, which she has already left but is still working at until a replacement is found. 
There, a wheelchaired old man arrives as a customer and Haruka acts as her waiter. There, she overhears his phone call where he mentions the fox's curse. This leads to Kunamatsu, the old man's attendant, to explain that there is a Tamatsuka fox shrine in this city. This old man, who is Chairman Eri, wants to erect a new building there but the development has been running into issues, apparently because of fox's curse. That night, Haruka decides to visit the shrine, where she encounters a human figure wearing a fox mask. Saying this, she is terrified and flees immediately. However, while running, she bumps into a man who is seen to have a red eye similar to Seidu. On the other hand, the blonde man from before entrusts his female partner with the rest of the task. Back to Haruka, who learns that this guy is Seidu's uncle. Not only that, she tells him about the ghost she just saw. As such, they both go to the location, where this man, Ishin, reveals that his red eye is a fake. He claims that he wanted to see Seidu's hardships on his own and as such, pretended he has a red eye as well. Anyway, as they are unable to find any clues, they head back and Haruka decides to follow Ishin to his temple. On the way, he explains that to Seidu, this place, a temple, cannot feel like a home as many ghosts are drawn to this place. Regardless, as they enter, they find Seidu is present there. In addition, Haruka also meets with now Seidu's deaf cousin. However, although Ishin offers that they all share some tea, Seidu takes leave. This hurts Haruka's feelings, but Ishin and Nao both try to cheer her up. Ishin even tells her to confide in Seidu about what she saw at the Fox Shrine, deeming him as someone who will not ignore these sorts of requests. As such, she runs after him but sees Seidu chatting with a girl at the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> deciding to not intervene. The next day, she sees to be distracted at work and later on, visits the Tamatsuki shrine again. This time, she finds the wheelchair chairman from before to be present there and tells him about the ghost she saw. Hearing this, the old man proclaims that life is cruel, stating that only when it is coming to an end is when one can finally see the truth. According to him, money, status, nor fame is important. Rather, what is important is to live true to yourself and have no regrets. Suddenly, the child's laughter is heard once again as the lights blow up. A piece of pipe also comes flying towards Haruka, but Seidu appears and pushes her pout of the way. Seeing him, the chairman asks who he is. This leads to him explaining he is Akumo, a person who is investigating this area as per a request. He claims that there indeed does live a ghost here, but this phenomenon was not caused by it. According to Seidu, ghosts are nothing but a cluster of emotions, which are not able to manipulate matter, and this leads him to theorize someone is behind this all. The laugher is from a speaker, the lights blew up because of gunpowder and, as per him, the culprit is inside the storage shed, where all this equipment is connected to. With this, the culprit reveals himself, slowly stepping out of the shed. There, the culprit is no one other than Kunamatsu, who apologies to the chairman and Haruka for placing them in danger. In addition, he reveals the reason for his actions, his objection to the development of this shrine. There, Kunamatsu gets frank with the chairman, who is revealed to be his longtime friend. Addressing him as Tekken, he tells him to bring an end to this silly idea, stating that no matter what, Kuniko will never come back. It is revealed that in their youth, the chairman was in love with a woman called Kuniko. However, they were from completely different backgrounds. Despite this, they both fell for each other and decide to elope. As such, the future chairman sent a message to Kuniko, telling her to meet him at the Fox Shrine. However, she accidentally went to the East Shrine instead of the West, where he was waiting. Because of this, they never got to know each other well enough and drifted apart. As a result, a year later, Kuniko married someone of her parents' choice but died soon after giving birth to her first child. Because of their past, Eri has always felt a bit guilty and now that he has not much longer to live, he wants to complete his wish and merge the East and West shrines. But Seidu chimes in. He claims that there is no need for such a thing. Announcing that he can see ghosts, he tells Eri that Kuniko's ghost is still waiting for him here. Hearing these words, Eri tries his best to stand up and makes his way over to the place Seidu pointed. All of a sudden, the fox mask spurt appears in front of him. Having finally met his beloved, this fox spirit is finally able to move on from this world and ascend. After this incident, Yakumo meets with Masayaka Kimi, the Haruka saw chatting with Yakumo. He explains that this woman is the one who asked him to investigate this area. According to him, she read her grandmother's journal and visited the Tamatsuki shrine, seeing the ghost there. At the university, Haruka pays Yakumo a visit, wanting to be more honest with herself after the incident with Eri. On the other hand, the blonde woman from before is currently manipulating the father, who is finding possible candidates for his daughter's soul's new vessel. One night, Bakar is traveling on the mountainside. 
As a result, it goes through a dark and creepy looking tunnel. However, as soon as the vehicle enters, a black mist starts appearing from the walls. Eventually, a hand fades through the car's roof, suddenly terrifying the driver. But that's not all as a woman's head emerges from the car floor, turning into a demonic face My foot! Put your foot down! and causing the car to crash. The next morning, Haruka goes to meet with Yakumo but finds that he is not in the club room. Nonetheless, seeing his key in the fridge, which is a completely normal place to store it, she figures he will return soon and waits for him there. On the other hand, the daughter of the chief of police arrives at the station. This woman, who is a journalist, wants to get some information from the cops but no one gives her their time of day. It is seen that the cops hate her guts for using her father's name and reputation in her favor. There, she happens upon Godu, who is against talking with her but she manages to convince him to get some information. As such, they both head to a secluded place where the journalist shows the detective a photograph. She asks if Godu thinks that ghosts exist and he replies in the affirmative. Not only that, but the journalist has also apparently caught an image of a ghost, upon seeing which, Godu thinks that Seidu will prove helpful in this case. Consequently, A heads to meet with him but finds Haruka there, who recognizes him. Regardless, they both decide to wait for Seidu together. There, Godu reveals that he has known Seidu since the latter was a kid. However, he feels hesitant to recall the entire memory. Eventually, Seidu finally shows up and Haruka begins with the problem she has brought up today. He recalls how yesterday, because of working overtime, she missed the last bus. As a result, the assistant manager, Nakahara, decided to give her a ride to the train station. But on the way, they had to pass the supposed haunted tunnel. When going trough, they saw many sinister looking figures, but Nakahara managed to flee form the tunnel. As such, Haruka wants Seidu to check her and Nakahara for any ghosts that might have attached themselves to the unsuspecting humans. Although Seidu claims Haruka is free of spritz, he cannot tell anything about Nakahara without seeing him and agrees to check him on his conditions. After this, Godu is up next and he shows Seidu the ghost picture, asking what he thinks about it. Immediately, Seidu sees that the background contains a garage, and not any garage but an illegal one, run by Hayami Toru, a low-life mechanic who fixes any and all cars for money. During a recent hit-and-run case, this place was discovered but Toru Hand already abandoned the place by them. Moreover, the spirit in the photo is a great scholar who went missing two months ago and was never found. Therefore, Godu wants Yakumo to communicate with the ghost of this child and find out information eye on Toru. As such, the first thing is discovering the body. As a result, God and Seidu head to the location and begin digging a hole. There, they eventually find the child's body. And so, the body is taken back to the old creepy doctor from before, who examines the corpse and deems that the body has a rope mark around the neck. This leads to the conclusion that the child was run over and then strangled to death. Hearing this, Godu is enraged when suddenly, he gets a call from Hijikata, the chief's daughter. She wants to talk to Godu about something but Godu has no time to meet up, telling her to just tell him the facts over the phone. As such, she tells him that the owner of the illegal garage, Toru, has been arrested as of now. On the other hand, Haruka brings Nakahara to Seidu to get him cleared of any ghosts. There, Seidu finds no lingering ghosts around while Nakahara is intrigued by his room greater than however. He happens upon the ghost photo, which has been placed up again the wall, and begins to tremble. Yakumo notices this and becomes very of him. Consequently, he heads out of the room to tell all this to Godu. According to Seidu, Nakahara either recombines the location, the ghost in the photo, or the murderer himself. All of a sudden, Hijikata bring Godu some new information, Toru has confessed. This proves Seidu's theory that Nakahara hit the boy with his car. As a result, he went to Toru to fix his car while he buried the still-breathing boy to cover the incident. With this, Godu tells him to keep Nakahara there at all costs, but it appears that he, along with Haruka, has already left. Therefore, Seidu calls Haruka but she decides to top not to pick up, recalling how he told her earlier that he has no need of telling her his movements. Nevertheless, all of a sudden, Nakahara's body tenses up. Uncontrollably stiff, he runs over as a red light, making Haruka question his actions. But he claims that he cannot move his body. Suddenly, she sees the image of the ghost child on the rear seat. As the ghost disappears, Haruka gets the ingenious idea to call Seidu, instead of having just picked up her phone in the first place. Hence, after Godu arrives, Yakumo joins him and they chase down Nakahara. Soon, they manage to catch up and Yakumo wants to try and convince the ghost to carry out his plan. 
However, he fails to do so. This makes Sadu perplexed at what he should do now, and seeing him in peril, Godu decides to do something. Accelerating even more, he comes directly parallel to Nakahara's car, using his own vehicle to smash the enemy car into the rails and walls, managing to stop the car. As both cars come to a halt, Seidu hastily checks up on Haruka when, all of a sudden, the ghost runs right past him. As such, he follows him deeper into the tunnel. There, the boy begins to get sucked into a ball. Seeing this, Seidu extends his hand to help the boy's ghost but decides against it, leaving the ghost to get consumed by the sinister blobs in the tunnel. The next day, Haruka returns to the tunnel to offer flowers to the boy's soul when Ishin and Nao also show up. It is revealed that they were asked to come her from Seidu, who wants Ishin to do something about all the ghosts in this area which cannot rest. On the way back, Haruka learns more about Seidu as Ishin reveals the story of how and why he named Yakumo they name he did. There, they both also wish that he overcomes the problems in his life and one day, may his heart be clear as the open sky above them. On the other hand, somewhere else, the old doctor is at an investigation scene where a body has just been discovered. As the doctor opens up the body bag to examine the corpse, he is caught by surprise but regardless, gets to taking pictures. All of a sudden, he feels the presence of the blonde woman and the father behind him. They, in the meantime, are feeling sad that Ayaka, the dead daughter, is still not reviving but the blonde woman tells him to continue and hope the next one will work out. Even the blonde man is seen there and at a closer look, it is revealed that he too has a red eye, as he prepares to face off against Yakumo. On a dark and rainy night, Hijikata drives on empty roads. Suddenly, in the middle of the street, she sees a pain laying on the road. Seeing this, she immediately gets out of the car and heads towards this man. Upon inspection, she finds him to be wriggling in pain while holding his chest. As such, she immediately calls an ambulance when, all of a sudden, he begins to scream aloud in pain. And the next thing you know, his body ceases to move. Ijikata, who is now on the ground after getting scared, is distraught. However, the real danger still eludes her. As she turns back, she finds the figure of this man behind her, covered in an ominous purple aura. The next morning, a corpse of a schoolgirl is discovered and hence, the police are called. There, the creepy old doctor is called to examine the body and learns that the method of killing is the same as the girl they found previously. As a result, he concludes that this must be the work of a serial killer. All of a sudden, another police officer comes running, telling his peers that they are going to hold a press conference about this situation. Although the old doctor is surprised about this, one of the officers reveals that just recently another girl was reported missing. Rumi, who is now being investigated and on the news because of her disappearance, has made this situation public and so, the police will have to have a conference about it. Therefore, the officers head to the venue but there, they learn that Godu has been transferred out of this unit. Because of his tendency to poke his nose in unrelated matters, the top brass has sent him somewhere else. This somewhere is the Criminal Investigation Division's Unsolved Cases Special Investigation Unit. Along with him, Ishii Yutero has also been transferred. At the office, Ishii arrives for the first day, introducing himself, but Godu is taking a nap and ignores him. Suddenly, the phone starts to ring. It is the chief calling him to his cabin, but Godu is reluctant and tells the chief to just tell him the situation over the phone. This rash sight of Godu makes Ishii watch in admiration. Meanwhile, at Maize University, Haruka meets with a concerned friend. This girl tells her about how she saw a ghost and was told by Miki to consult Haruka. As such, Haruka goes to the film club room, where Yakumo is sitting on his own. Once there, Haruka takes out some of her personal belongings from the fridge, starting an argument with Yakumo. Moreover, it is revealed that Haruka is now an official member of this club, and as such, she has just as much entitlement to the facilities here as Yakumo. There, Yakumo also notices Shoshi has started calling him Yakumo, unlike before when she referred to him as Seidu-san. She claims that it feels weird calling him so formally when they are the same age. Somehow or the other, she convinces him of this but just as she is about to get onto the reasons he is here, Kodu walks in. He tells Yakumo to come with him. Seeing this, he tries to come up with an excuse, stating he has arrangements with Haruka but she is nowhere to be seen. It is revealed that she sneaked out earlier and now is trying to investigate her friend's incident on her own. While Godu takes Yakumo to the chief's house, he tells him about how Hijikata, the female journalist, and Ando, a 42-old man, were found collapsed on the ground. Ando dies due to an overdose but now Hijikata's family are claiming she has been possessed. It so happens to be that the chief o police is Hijikata's father, who has begged Godu to save his daughter. And so, they finally reach their destination. While Godu and Yakumo head inside, Ishii is seen to be fantasizing about Haruka, bewitched by her beauty. Stop it! 
Get some help. On the other hand, Haruka violates the location of the incident. There, she finds a grave and decides to pray over it. Nevertheless, as she looks up, she finds a white figure floating on the river. This white figure's words manipulate Haruka, telling her to come closer and she jumps into the river. Fortunately, there happen to be policemen around who overhears the commotion. Back at the chief's house, as Godu and Yakumo enter, they find a bed where Hijikata is laying down, looking pale, weak and out of it. However, upon sensing their presence, she sits up straight, making aggressive and insane expressions towards them. Telling Godu to stay back, Yakumo closes in to take a better look and finds that Ando's soul is looming over her. With this, he takes a step back, informing Godu about his findings. According to him, Ando wants to live desperately and that is why he is possessing Hijikata. Not only that, but if this continues, she will weaken more and eventually die. Even Yakumo is not sure how to deal with this situation, but first, they need to know all the can about this Ando guy. Consequently, they head to the creepy doctor to retrieve Ando's files. There, the doctor is amazed to see Yakumo. He welcomes him, asking him questions about death and human souls. However, Godu and Ishii break up the topic. Anyway, after retrieving the files, Godu orders Ishii to go find the stuff Ando had on him when he died. As such, while Ishii is away, Godu and Yakumo look over the files. While waiting, Yakumo claims that Ishii holds feelings for Godu, feelings which are something more than respect and admiration, as per Yakumo. This male Godu derided out when suddenly Ishii finally arrives. Although Godu is now varied about Ishii's intentions, they all still go over the items and Yakumo finds a picture in a book. This is the picture of Ayaka, the same ghost Haruka saw on the river. With this, Ishii is ordered to investigate one of the keys while Godu and Yakumo investigate the other key in this picture. As such, they head to a clinic to investigate the photograph. It just so happens that Haruka was also admitted there after being found by someone while drowning. There, Yakumo possesses a detective however the doctor recognizes him. Apparently, he was the one who helped Yakumo's mother, Azusa, birth him. The doctor asks how his mother is, learning that she has been missing for 10 years. In a flashback, it is revealed that one night, Yakumo's mother tried to strangle him to death. Even the red jewel necklace belongs to her. That night, he manages to snatch it from her while he was saved by a security officer, Godu. Yakumo also has one question for the doctor. How did his mother react seeing that her newborn had a red eye? The doctor is hesitant to answer it, but upon Yakumo's insistence, he reveals that she was completely horrified after seeing this. This makes him extremely sad and he exists the room, seeing Haruka, who woke up and ended up eavesdropping on the conversation, standing outside the door. Regardless, he ignores her and makes his way to the river. As he stares at the water, he is enraged and decides to discard the red jewel. As he begins to throw the necklace away, Haruka intervenes, stopping him from doing so. She claims that he should not throw it away his mother's only possession, but Yakumo pushes her away. He questions what Haruka knows about him. As Haruka falls over, he realizes that he is getting violent and feels apologetic. But Haruka then begins to speak. She claims that of course, she knows nothing about him. Yakumo is always alone, carrying all his burdens in silence. However, she wants to help him. Not only that, she tells him to not discard his mother's necklace, claiming that although she might have her reasons, she was still his mother. Her words are enough for Yakumo to change his mind. With this, he apologizes to Haruka, handing her the necklace to hold on to. As they share this bittersweet moment, they are seen to be watched by the blonde couple. The man expresses how, even despite learning the truth, Yakumo is still able to resist the darkness. But this is all just a path of life. Eventually, he too will fall into the abyss, swallowed by the never-ending night, just like his mother did. In addition, the man orders the woman to inform their victim that he has just found a prefect vessel for his daughter's soul. It is seen that their victim is no one other than the Dr. Kinoshita, who they just met with today. Regardless, now that Yakumo is in control of his emotions, Haruka tells him about her ordeal. Recalling the story about her friend, Mayuko, who happened upon the ghost, she takes him to the same location. There, Godu comes running behind. While Yakumo investigates, God asks what happened and Haruka tells him. Hearing this, he just tells her to call up Yakumo for these sorts of things however Haruka state that she doesn't want to be someone who just uses him for his power. With this, she goes to Yakumo's side, who tells her the same thing. Not only that, but he also sees the ghost. As such, they head back to the clinic, 
There, Yakumo comes clean, applying for acting like a police officer. There, Goto explains the situation of Hijikata. Apparently, Ando was Kinoshita's junior in medical school and were close. According to him, after his daughter, Ayaka, had died, Ando asked for a picture of her to remember her with, something which looked to be weird behavior. Regardless, Kinoshita gave him the picture Goto had discovered. As Kinoshita is done speaking, Yakumo announces that he had just met with Ayaka's ghost. He claims that her ghost is still lingering in the area where she died, telling all those who pass by to stop it. Yakumo asks if Kinoshita knows why she would do something like that, making him deny any knowledge. However, Yakumo pushes further, asking if Kinoshita is trying to revive his daughter. Nevertheless, Kinoshita answers that it would be his wish if possible. As such, they all leave and decide to find clues to the next key. As they drive, Yakumo notices an E3 painted on the walls. Seeing this, he realizes that the letter is the same letter as on the key. As a result, Godu and Yakumo decided to check fifth place out. As they enter this shed, they slowly sneak in. There, they sense the presence of a human and arm their elves, however, what they find is Rumi, the girl who was recently reported missing. This news was made public and Rumi has written to her family in a statement. Not only that, the belongings of all the girls that have been murdered are also found in the shed, making Ando the serial killer behind this incident. The next day, the old doctor calls Yakumo to his office where he shows him the expressions of the recently murdered girls. The doctor said that in his long life has this sort of work. He has never seen such a peaceful expression on the dead and asked Yakumo if he knows what that might mean. But there, Godu, who is accompanying Yakumo, happened to see a photo. This is a photograph of Kinoshita, and by his side is the blonde man. Seeing this, Yakumo is perplexed. Meanwhile, Haruka is heading to meet with Kinoshita to thank him for saving her. On the way, she bumps into Ishin and Nao. As they all chat, Ishin notices that Haruka is wearing his sister's necklace. As such, Haruka explains that Yakumo had given it to her to hold on to. With this, they part way and she heads to the clinic. As she reaches there, she gives the offerings she has brought to Kinoshita. But he, on the other hand, is acting strongly. He claims that he had to meet Haruka, no what matter. This confuses her but Kinoshita explains his words, stating that he is told Haruka will be the perfect vessel for Ayaka's soul. All of a sudden, the blonde woman appears from behind, using a taser to knock Haruka out. Meanwhile, after seeing the photograph, Godu is hastily making his way to Kinoshita, deeming that the makes the involvement of the blonde man makes him a highly suspicious target. On their way, Yakumo gets a call from Haruka. As he picks it up, the blonde woman speaks from the other side. She tells him that his precious friend will die tonight. Telling him the location, she tells him to hurry and maybe he could make it on time. And so, Yakumo tells Godu to change directions and head towards the floodgate. And so, they rush to the location, finding that Kinoshita is about to throw Haruka into the river. Nevertheless, Yakumo and Godu desperately try to prevent this but Kinoshita uses a pipe, top hit Godu, causing Haruka to fall. Without a destination, Yakumo jumps in after her and manages to rescue her. Soon after, Haruka opens her eyes. Kinoshita, who is snow constrained, will be arrested first. He wants to ask him something. As a result, he tells Godu to take them all back to the clinic and call up Hata, the old doctor, and Ishii, who is ordered to bring the possessed to Jakata. Once everyone has gathered, Yakumo begins. He asks if Kinoshita was shown Ayaka's spirit with the help of the two red-eyed men. Kinoshita agrees, explaining that he was told if he killed a girl the same age as his daughter, her soul would possess the corpse and Ayaka would be revived. On the next question, why did Kinoshita kill Endo? He did so because Endo was not his junior. Rather, Endo was introduced to him by this blonde man to kidnap the girls resembling his daughter. However, Endo soon began blackmailing him, asking for more money or else he would come clean to the police. That is why Kinoshita used drugs to kill Endo. According to him, trash like Endo, who uses the parents' love for their children to transport them should die. But Yakumo comes in, claiming that even Kinoshita's victims had parents. This lead to Kinoshita abusing Yakumo, asking what a child his mother tries to kill knows. However, Yakumo then explains that although he might not know about this, he knows the suffering of a child who has to endure the consequences of his parents' actions. With this, he brings out the photos of all the recently murdered girls. He claims that Ayaka's soul possessed these bodies for sure. According to him, Ayaka wanted to relieve the fear and pain from the victims in their final breaths and as such, she had to endure all the pain after she decided to possess the dying girls in tear last moments. Because of this, it is like Kinoshita has repeatedly killed his daughter, making her soul relive death over and over again. 
Hearing this, Kinoshita breaks down and seeing him realize his action. Ando's ghost leaves to Jakata. Nevertheless, as per Yakumo, Ando left because he realized that even possessing someone is not enough for a soul to return back to life. The next morning, Haruka opens Ayaka's grave for a visit. There, Goto returns to his office. In the car, he finally figures out why Ishii looks at him with such eyes, learning that Ishii thought Goto was a psychic who used his powers to solve cases. But as it turns out, it is Yakumo who has the power. Meanwhile, while Haruka is praying, Yakumo looks across the river, finding that the blonde man is standing there. It is revealed that this man is Yakumo's biological daughter, something Yakumo refuses to acknowledge. Nevertheless, Haruka is done with her prayer and they both head back. One day, a bachelor is visiting an apartment he wants to rent. Supposedly, this place is haunted, which makes their rent extremely cheap. Not only that, it also comes with an inconspicuous mirror, what a great deal. However, that same night, he feels a presence while showering, but he just chalks it up to his imagination. As such, he continues his routine and heads into the room. Suddenly, the lights go out. Soon after, despite the darkness, the man sees a ghostly figure behind the mirror, causing him to scream in horror. The next morning, Hijikata visited the unsolved cases unit at the police department. Nonetheless, her arrival makes Ishii jumpy, and he ends up spilling coffee on himself. Anyway, Hijikata claims she has come to pay her thanks, however, Godu is nowhere to be seen. It has been revealed that he has taken the day off and returned home, but neither his wife nor child are present. Meanwhile, at the university, Haruka and her friends are discussing typical topics that girls often talk about. Who would have thought? Mayuko mentions Yakumo and shifts the conversation to Haruka. This leads to her rambling on about her feelings and personal issues, while her friends abandon her and go to talk to a guy who appears to be distressed. This is the same guy who was attacked by the ghost in the apartment, Date. This brings Haruka to the film club, where she finds Yakumo sleeping yet again. Regardless, she wakes him up and they both start bickering. Yakumo even called her fat, which was a Chad move. However, eventually, Haruka told him about Date's situation. Yakumo decides to help out and first heads to meet with the real estate agent. From him, Yakumo learns about how a woman named Kimiko passed away in that room, and ever since, ghosts have been appearing there. And so, Yakumo decides to learn more about Kimiko by heading to her workplace. There, he meets one of her co-workers. Posing as his family, he learns that Kimiko is a rather uptight and serious girl who is not very well liked by others. With this new piece of information, they begin their journey towards Date's location. However, on the way, Ishii and Hijikata spot them. Ishii is delighted to see his beloved Haruka-chan and asks her to accompany them. He claims that Hijikata is treating him to food to celebrate her recovery, so Haruka should tag along with them. Nevertheless, while she is talking with Ishii, Yakumo leaves her behind. Noticing this, she has to refuse the invitation and begins searching for him. Eventually, she finds her way to Date's apartment. As she arrives, there presses the doorbell and enters the house. Inside, she sees Yakumo without a shirt and he explains that he was borrowing Date's shower. Moreover, Haruka starts complaining and asks why he left her and then continues to ignore her calls. But Yakumo is unconcerned, claiming that he never asked her to come anyway. Despite this, the atmosphere is kind of steamy. This being the first time in a guy's room and the first time seeing Yakumo without a shirt, Haruka is acting a bit. Weird. Suddenly, Yakumo apologizes for his harsh words earlier, catching Haruka off guard. With this announcement, he then closes in on her, making her heart beat faster. But, unlike in her imagination, Yakumo has found a clue. He notices that the inconspicuous mirror was attached by an amateur, most likely Kamiko herself. All of a sudden, Yakumo sees a ghostly figure in the mirror. Upon speaking with it, he is instructed to retrieve an envelope from behind the mirror and burn it without looking inside. Yakumo plans to do just that. As a result, they head over to Ishin's temple, where he has already prepared a fire for them. However, at the last moment, Haruka decides not to burn the envelope without peeking inside. As such, she opened the envelope, only to find a picture of Kimiko, all dolled up. Seeing this, she understands that Kimiko is a shy girl who wants to dress up and look cute. However, she was too shy and couldn't do so in public. Hence, others considered her as serious. Suddenly, Kimiko's ghost arrives. Yakumo tells this to Haruka, stating that she is not angry that Haruka broke the promise. With this, she then burns the picture and the envelope, and Kimiko's ghost passes on after telling Haruka to do her best as well. And so, this brings this ordeal to an end. While Haruka plays with now, Ishin and Yakumo chat. There, he expresses his wonder if there was another personality inside his mother that he didn't know about, similar to Kimiko's shy side. 
Anyway, Haruka soon comes back, and they both leave the temple. As they exist, now approaches him. Looking at him with puppy eyes, it looks like now wants something. As such, Haruka gives him a clue. Now is wearing a new cardigan. With this, he understands what now wants and gives her a compliment. This makes her extremely happy, and Haruka commends Yakumo by poking him in the ribs. This not only sends him flying away, but also reveals that his ribs are his weak spot. One night, a young girl was seen drawing savage cannibalizing humans while singing an eerie lullaby. Suddenly, she is approached by the blonde man. This man announces that dreams do not come true by merely drawing them. Rather, one has to work and fight to make them a reality. Showing her his red eyes, he manages to convince her to come under his wing. The following day, Haruka heads to the film club once again. There, Yakumo is sitting on the couch and asks what kind of trouble she has brought him today. But today, she comes bearing good news and presents him with a concert poster. Haruka announces that she will be taking part in it and wants Yakumo to come listen to her play. In her tsundere attitude, Yakumo agrees to come along and Haruka leaves soon after, stating that she will bring the ticket tomorrow. Elsewhere, Hijikata is in an abandoned, ruined manor. There, she is taking pictures of this mansion, hoping to find any sophistication and such. Rumors surround this mansion and that is what Hijikata has come to investigate. Nevertheless, she is not too happy with her progress so far. As a result, she decides to venture into the upper levels of the mansion. While exploring, she hears a faint noise coming from a room. Therefore, she peeks in only to find that a woman has collapsed on the ground. As Hijikata wakes her up, she appears to be a bit delirious, screaming out that there is a ghost. Suddenly, the woman hugs her, as she makes a sinister grin behind Hijikata's back. And so, Kodu and Ishii visited Yakumo. They informed him about the situation and asked him to take a look at the video of a ghost. Kodu explains that it was filmed in the Nane's mansion, where four members of the family were murdered 15 years ago. In hindsight, a new unit has been formed to investigate this case and arrest take to Shunsuk. As such, Yakumo ends up following them to the police department. There, they all join up with Hijikata and review the footage. Hijikata has already checked with the professionals, and this footage seems to be unedited. Finally, they begin watching, however, the film is too long. Most of the time, nothing happens, and as a result, Yakumo asks Hijikata to fast forward it to the exact time. And so, she does just that, and on the screen, a ghostly figure can be seen as clear as day. Upon seeing the ghost, Yakumo immediately stands up and silently leaves the room. Meanwhile, Haruka goes to the film room, but the door is locked. As such, using a spare key she has, she enters the room and puts the ticket there. Later that night, Yakumo calls her, much to her delight and surprise. But he doesn't have good news, stating that he has something to do and so will not be able to attend the concert. After hanging up, he heads over to a location. The next morning, Kodu and Ishii are still trying to get in contact with Yakumo, but he isn't answering his phone. All of a sudden, Captain Miyagawa arrives. Meanwhile, Haruka goes to the club room and finds that Yakumo has not yet returned. Moreover, she finds a map with a location pinpointed on it and decides to go look for Yakumo in this too delicate area. As she explores, a man's figure is seen behind her. On the other hand, Kodu has been dragged away by Miyagawa, who confides in him. She reveals that she was the officer who discovered Nanase's murders. However, Miyuki, a 10-year-old girl, was kidnapped and is still alive. Even though she tried to save her, someone or rather something attacked her. Now, she has been missing for 15 years and Miyagawa wants Godu to find her and solve the case. And so, he takes Ishin with him and heads to investigate the Nanase Manor late at night. But first, Godu suggests that they interview Ishino, the girl who filmed the ghost. But when they visit her, Godu finds her to resemble the blonde woman who accompanies the red-eyed man. Regardless, they do the interview and then hurry to the mansion. But Ishii is too afraid to step inside. As a result, Godu ventures alone but is attacked by the blonde woman. As she confronts and tases him, Godu screams aloud. Despite this, Ishii is too afraid to intervene and instead calls the police for help. The next day, Miyagawa scolds him for his cowardly behavior, punching him and announcing that he will never forgive him if something happens to Godu. Meanwhile, Haruka is still worried about how Yakumo is still nowhere to be found. But the person in question is seen near a wooden cabin. As he explores the cabin, he too is jumped by the blonde woman. She easily overwhelms him, revealing that the video was a trap to lure Yakumo to this location. Not only that, she comes closer to him and announces that she loves him so much so that she wants to ruin his life. With this, she then tases his heart and begins laughing maniacally. In the meantime, the police are putting up posters to find Takeda. Suddenly, one of the police officers noticed him standing only a few feet in front of them. This causes a chase, and Takeda seems to be luring them somewhere. On the other hand, Hijikata comes to the office and learns that Godu has really disappeared. 
Not only that, she finds that Ishii is now a shell of his former self. As Yakumo is also out of range, they contact Haruka, who is en route to the temple. As a result, everyone gathers at the temple. After a short introduction, they get onto the topic, learning that Godu and Yakumo both disappeared around the same time after seeing the ghost footage. Ishin wants to have a look himself. However, what he finds is shocking. The ghost captured in the video is none other than Azusa, Ishin's sister and Yakumo's mother. Suddenly, Ishii, who had been unresponsive until now, spoke up, suggesting that they should leave this to the police. However, Haruka refutes this and condemns Ishii for thinking in such a manner, calling him disgusting. As such, Ishii leaves the room and Hijikata follows him. She finds him sitting depressed on the temple stairs and gives him words of encouragement. Thanks to her words and motivation, Ishii finally realizes how much he has messed up recently and decides to open his eyes once and for all. Meanwhile, Ishin heads out to the burial grounds, where Haruka has escaped crying. There, he also comforts her. Additionally, he recalls a story from the past. When Yakumo was in middle school, there was a teacher who passed away. Yakumo blamed himself for this and one night, he tried to poke his own eye out. Nevertheless, Ishin stops him from doing so, getting injured in the process. It was on that day that Ishin started wearing the red contact lenses, not wanting to leave Yakumo alone in this cruel situation. Hearing this story, Haruka understands how Yakumo is also trying to shield others from himself. With this, she calms down and they both return to the temple where Ishii is already present. He apologizes for his earlier words. Finally, the group is on the same page. As such, Hijikata suggests that they start thinking like Yakumo in order to find his location. As such, they start reviewing the footage again. All of a sudden, Haruka realizes something. She noticed that although the supposed location is near the train tracks, there are no trains passing by despite it being peak hours. This led her to theorize that the location of this footage is not Nane's manor. To verify this, both Hijikata and Ishii attempt to gather information on the person who gave them the video. However, they discover that all the information provided was fake. Suddenly, Ishin came walking in. While searching through his sister's belongings for clues, he stumbled upon a letter addressed to her. And who is the writer of this letter? Haruka's mother. This leaves everyone shocked. With this, Ishin once again goes into a flashback. Apparently, Azusa was once abducted and captured by a man. However, after two entire weeks, she was able to escape. And the one who helped her at that time was Kiko, Haruka's mother. Faith really is a mysterious thing, Ishin proclaims. In addition, he states that although he has wanted to open this letter multiple times, wishing it could hold a clue to her location, he couldn't bring himself to do it. Not only that, but during the time of Azusa's capture, she was abused. Later, she gave birth to Yakumo, with the biological father being the kidnapper. As such, Hijikata, Ishii, and Haruka leave Ishin alone and take the letter with them. Outside, they open up the letter and read it. But what they learn shakes them to their core. According to the letter, Azusa's fiancé was none other than Takeda, the one suspected of the Nanase murders. As such, they drop Haruka off at her apartment and go to the office to reinvestigate the case. Haruka is clearly exhausted, claiming that she hasn't slept since Yakumo disappeared. And so, she immediately goes to her bed and falls asleep, despite trying to stay awake. Meanwhile, the blonde man tells his subordinate that he is going to Yakumo because Takeda has made his move and entrusted her to capture Haruka. In the meantime, Takeda is still being chased but suddenly, at a dead end, he disappears in front of his pursuers. Back at the office, Ishii stubbornly asked for any information regarding Takeda, wanting to find Godu. But Chief Miyagawa reprimanded him, telling him to clean the toilets like the new employee he is. However, she drops subtle hints in her order, leading Takeda to locate a file in the restroom. Soon after, Miyagawa also enters the men's washroom, where she encounters Ishin and finds Godu. Also, it was my first time in the men's restroom, but I don't think I can believe her. Anyway, after his talk with the chief, Ishii talks to Godu's wife, telling her not to worry as he will find her husband. Back at Haruka's apartment, the blonde woman arrived to kidnap Haruka, but suddenly Takeda stood in front of her. Not only that, but he has also mobilized the police, which is why he appeared in front of the officers, preventing this woman from executing her evil plan. Elsewhere, Yakumo is seen tied up and beaten. The following morning, thanks to Takeda's efforts, Haruka wakes up in her own bedroom. Takeda appears in front of him and tells him that Yakumo is safe. Moreover, he claims that Yakumo is currently in Nagano and he has a message for Haruka to practice for her concert. With this, Taita then disappears. But of course, despite knowing there are people after her, Haruka willingly heads to Nagano. The blonde woman is seen following her as well. 
As they board the train, Haruka calls her mother and explains the situation. Meanwhile, Hijikata and Ishii found nothing out of the ordinary with the file. As a result, they headed to meet with Hana. There, they figure out that Nanase Miyuki, the young girl who was kidnapped while the murder occurred, resembles Hashino, the woman who gave them the ghost footage, and the blonde woman. Realizing this, Ishii rushes to Miyuka's grade school teacher and interviews her. It is revealed that Miyuki was abused by her family, and her father had even built a secret room, a special place where he could play with his daughter. During the investigation, they did not find a room like this, so they hurried back to the mansion. There, Takeda's ghost guides them to a secret room where they find Godu present. As such, they both free him, but Godu is in a rush. According to him, Yakumo and Haruka are in danger. He claims that Takeda's ghost has informed him about everything, and the blonde man wants to kill Haruka in front of Yakumo to bring him into darkness. Meanwhile, Haruka finally reaches Nagano, where her mother picks her up. As such, they both immediately head to the villa where Azusa was kept while kidnapped. Consequently, they took their way there. In the meantime, Haruka left her mother some distance away and ventured into the woods alone, eventually locating a wooden shed. She finds Yakumo inside and frees him. However, he has been drugged and is still dizzy from the after effects. Suddenly, Miyuki appears behind them. Holding a crossbow, she threatened the duo, but in a stroke of luck, Godu and the other arrived at the scene from behind. As Godu sneaks up on Miyuki, Yakumo acts as a distraction. The question of who the killer was arose, prompting Miyuki to explain that it was all her doing all along. After the fact, the blonde man set it up so that Takeda was suspected, but he was not the actual culprit. While she blabbers on, Godu finds the perfect moment and jumps on her, restraining her and allowing Yakumo and Haruka to run away. However, suddenly, the blonde appears in front of them. Not only that, Miyuki is able to knock out Godu with a taser as well. Upon the man's command, Miyuki was about to shoot an arrow at Haruka's leg, but suddenly, Azusa's spirit appeared. In the nick of time, she prevents Miyuki from firing and is prepared to finally show Yakumo the truth. Todu explains that, according to Takeda, when he was blamed as a criminal, Azusa went into a state of grief, confusion, and hatred. In those weak moments, this cold man coerced her into killing Yakumo, claiming that he would grow up to kill even more than Takeda, and that is the reason she tried to kill him. Upon hearing this, Yakumo understands what his mother had to go through and forgives her. Furthermore, he proclaims that he has many invisible bonds with others, both dead and alive, and because of this, he will not succumb to the darkness. But of course, the blonde man is skeptical of this, wanting to see how much more Yakumo can endure. Suddenly, Miyuki frees herself and uses her taser to cause an explosion, allowing her and her master to escape. Nonetheless, Yakumo and the others set up a grave for Azusa and Takeda, where their souls can finally depart in peace. Before leaving, Azusa is able to caress her son and eventually ascends into the skies. With this, the ordeal comes to an end. Godu returns home to his wife, and Haruka is able to perform at her concert. In addition, not only Yakumo, but also Ishin, now Ishii Hijikata, and her mother all show up to witness her performance. After the performance, Yakumo and Haruka drop off her mother at the station. Keiko tells Haruka to come back home more often and also asks Yakumo to watch over her daughter. Not only that, as the train leaves, she claims she has something to give them and will send it as soon as possible. On the other hand, Hijikata is at a hospital where she learns that a ghost has been appearing recently. As per a friend of hers, a ghost appears above the sleeping patients, asking them when they will die. Because of this, several patients have also worsened their health because of the shock. As such, she decides to bring this matter to Yakumo. However, as she exists the hospital, she bumps into Nao and Ishin, who have come here for a mild headache. After exchanging formalities, Hijikata makes her way to Yakumo and tells him about the incident. Hearing this story, he agrees to investigate this case however, as of now, he has some prior arrangements. Consequently, he heads put to meet with Godu, Ishii, and Hana. There, they try and find clues about Yakumo's father and Miyuki's whereabouts. Not only that, after Ishii's ridiculous theory that the blonde man is a zombie, Yakumo also thought that his father might be a ghost. Back at the hospital, now meets with a little girl in a wheelchair, who is telling now about death and such. Meanwhile, Ishin learns that he has something wrong with his brain and as a result, might not be able to live into the next year. Later, Miyuki is also cornered and arrested by the police and Godu learns about this the next morning. There, Megawa explains that she has already sent in a request to interview Miyuki. According to her, the person in charge of this investigating 15 years ago is now an administrator at the headquarters. In order to keep his reputation intact, he is trying to make sure this incident isn't brought to the public and as such, Miyagawa has to act fast if she wants to know the truth. 
Meanwhile, Miyuki is seen siding in her cell, hopeful that he will save her and give her freedom. On the other hand, Ishin is heading back to the temple after undergoing another examination at the hospital. But this time, he cannot seem to find now anywhere and tries searching for her. While doing so, he meets with the same wheelchair-bound girl, now, whom he had met previously. Upon seeing her, Ishin asked if she had seen a small girl nearby, but she denied any knowledge of it. Moreover, they start talking and the girl reveals that she is dying with no more than six months to live. But Ishin comforts her. Furthermore, the child asks what happens after death, but Ishin tells her that there is no single answer. However, even though bodies die, the human soul does not, it remains alive in the memories of family and friends. Understanding that there is something greater even after death, the child is relieved. Suddenly, now arrives and Ishin asks this girl to be Nao's friend from now on. As this scene plays out, a concerned doctor is seen watching over all of them. Later that night, the doctor is approached by some shady-looking individual. The next day, Yakumo is looking over the call log confiscated from Miyuki and discovers that she had never called his father before. In his mind, this solidifies his theory that the blonde man is a ghost. All of a sudden, Haruka receives a call from Hijikaida informing her that the hospital is now open for Yakumo to investigate. As a result, they go to Ishin's temple. Ishin is also just a roving presence, and there, Yakumo asks if he can borrow Ishin's car. Along with this, Ishin decides to keep his trip to the hospital a secret from his nephew. But first, it's time for some tea. As they all sit and drink, Ishin brings out a photo album that Keiko has sent him. In this album, there are photos of Yakumo as a child. According to Ishin, Keiko must have kept them when Azusa sent them to her. Upon seeing this, Yakumo becomes sentimental and tries to leave, but Ishin stops him. As such, he sits back down and gets to see photographs of himself along with his mother. Azusa is wearing a bright and cheery expression while with her son after this. Ishin takes Yakumo to the oratory area where he asks if Yakumo hates his father, the blonde-haired man. There, he realizes he cannot tell Yakumo to stop his hatred but advises him to control it and not be consumed by it. But Yakumo asks why he is being told all of this. All of a sudden, Ishin drops the bombshell on him. The doctors have given him at most six months to live. Ishin wants to keep this a secret from now. With a scene shift, Megawa is seen interviewing Miyuki where Miyuki claims that Ishin will die, and the one to do it will be that man. On the other hand, the blonde man is standing on a rooftop, overlooking the city. After his chat with Ishin, he was allowed to borrow the car, but he still seemed out of it. He just cannot wrap his head around the fact that Ishin will soon no longer be with him. As they leave, Ishin also asks Haruka to watch over Yakumo from now onwards. With this, they both make their way to the hospital, where Hijikata is waiting for them. In the meantime, Ishii and Goto hastily make their way to the temple. On the way, Ishii learns about what Miyuki said. Eventually, they reach the temple, but Ishin is nowhere to be seen. Nonetheless, he soon arrives with Nao, claiming they had gone out to eat. Ishin is already aware of the threat he faces. Despite the situation, he is ready to face Yakumo's father and tells Godu to take care of now if anything happens to him. Suddenly, the blonde man appeared behind them. Ishin knocks out Godu with a swift punch to the gut. This leaves Ishin alone with the blonde man, and before he is killed, Ishin wants to talk with his future killer. Consequently, they enter the mediation area where Ishin begins his story. He tells the man about how he bore so much animosity and hatred towards him, the man who left his sister in hell and inflicted such evil and sinister trauma upon Yakumo. However, those feelings have long since died. While he continues with his story, the blonde man suddenly jumps in to attack Ishin, using a knife to stab him. Soon after, Godu wakes up. He rushes to the meditation area, worried about Ishin, and finds him lying on the floor with a stab wound in his stomach. Upon seeing this, he yells out for Ishii and orders him to call an ambulance, which arrives soon. Now and go to accompany Ishin to the hospital, while Ishii remains at the temple to help with investigations. On the other hand, Yakumo is still feeling distracted. Despite this, they happen upon the ghost and find that it has turned a new leaf. The ghost is seen apologizing to the patient she terrorized before. While contemplating what this could mean, Haruka starts her phone and immediately gets a call from Ishii, informing her of the recent development. And so, they rush back to the temple, but Godu calls them midway, telling them that they are needed at the hospital they were just at. And so, they all reach the hospital and Ishin is put in an emergency operation. However, even the doctor fails to be useful. Even with the machine connected to him, Ishin's heart is still barely beating, and he is now brain dead due to the lack of blood. Hearing this, everyone is completely distraught and perplexed. 
Suddenly, Arai, Hijikata's friend, comes to talk with Yakumo privately. Air and Goto also announce that they will be the ones to take care of now from now on, keeping true to the word they gave to Ishin. As such, he brings Haruka and Nao to his home and leaves immediately to help with the investigations. There, Goto's wife takes care of Nao, who is mentally exhausted and falls asleep soon after. Meanwhile, Yakumo spends the entire night by Ishin's side. The next morning, Hijikata tells Miyagawa that she has been ordered by her boss not to write about Ishin's stabbing. Not only that, but Miyagawa is also having trouble as the administrator is trying his best to keep this incident under wraps and away from the public's view. Meanwhile, Godu takes Hada to the temple and asks him to perform forensics. But there, Hada finds something concerning, such as the lack of the culprit's footprints. Anyway, after they are done, Ishii and Godu head to the police station. However, Miyagawa tells Godu to just head back home, claiming that she has to be there for now. As such, he heads back, seeing that now is cheerful and happy. But Godu is not. He is extremely torn up that Ishin is in such a condition, and deep inside, now is as well. At the prison, the blonde man possesses Miyuki for instance, making her act crazy and insane. This allows her to be sent to the hospital, and the man leaves her body soon after. On the other hand, Yakumo hasn't moved an inch the entire night, and in the morning, Haruka visits him. At the hospital, she is also given Ishin's red contact lenses. Haruka gives this to Yakumo, who recalls just how much Ishin had to go through because of him. Yakumo revealed why he was called to talk alone. It has been confirmed that Ishin is a registered organ donor, and the doctors are waiting for his next of kin to give the go-ahead for the extraction of his organs. But as Ishin is not yet dead, Yakumo is still hesitant to give them the green signal. All of a sudden, they see a child ghost appear by Ishin's side. This ghost checks up on him and then leaves, but Yakumo and Haruka decide to follow it back. Thanks to this, they are able to locate where the ghost is headed and learn that it is the ghost of a little girl, the same one as Shin and now had met previously, named Yoshiko. Arai, who is with them, informs them about Yoshiko's condition and explains that she will die without an organ transplant. As they leave the hospital that night, Yakumo is seen staring at a black car. Somewhere else, it is revealed that the ambulance carrying Miyuki was stolen and has just been discovered. Two policemen spot the ambulance and move in to intercept it. Suddenly, the blonde man appears behind them. Posing as a distraction, he allows Miyuki to attack the officers from behind using pipes. At the police station, Haruka confides in Godu, telling him that she thinks Yukiko has found the real culprit. However, because of Ishin's condition, his hatred has manifested and he now hates the world. Upon hearing this, Godu recalls that he was also like this in middle school. This piques Haruka's curiosity, and as such, Godu tells her about his and Yakumo's story. He first met Nakumo the day he saved him from his mother. However, after that incident, he no longer saw me around. That is until one night when Godu was pursuing a criminal. He happened upon Yakumo in the park late at night. Despite Yakumo remembering Godu, things do not translate the other way around. It was not until a few days later that he realized the identity of the boy he met in the park. One day, he oversees Akumo being picked on by some kids. As such, he jumps in to save him, where he sees this boy with a left red eye. Seeing this, Godu finally remembered who this boy is. And ever since then, their ties have continued. All of a sudden, Ishii rushed into the room and informed Godu about Miyuki's escape. She mentioned that they had killed two officers and stolen a gun. Moreover, Godu receives a call from his wife, Atsuko, who has gone to visit Ishin at the hospital with Nao. There, Nao sees Hijikata and goes over to her. However, all of a sudden, Hijikata also sees Yakumo there, looking all serious. As such, she tells Godu that he was looking and acting strange. Hence, Godu and Haruka rush over to the hospital, but they find that the route has been closed down. Back at the hospital, Yakumo confronts his uncle's surgeon, Dr. Sakikabara. He explains that he can see ghosts and the most recent ghost haunting this hospital belongs to Yoshilo, who is Sakabahara's daughter. In dire need of a transplant, she only has six months to live if she does not receive surgery. Upon seeing this, Sakakabara planned to intentionally cause brain death in Ishin, who was a registered organ donor and a perfect match for Yoshiko. Of course, the doctor refuses to listen, but Yakumo continues pressuring him. At last, Sakakabara breaks down. He asks why this man would suspect him when the murder was already foretold by the culprits and they are currently roaming free on the streets. And there is Yakumo's evidence. It hasn't been released to the public that the murder was foretold. Sakakabara has outed himself as the culprit and made a run for it. Unable to drive his car, he tries fleeing on foot but sees Haruka and Godu arrive, walking since the route was closed. 
Seeing them, he headed to the roof to leave via helicopter, but Nyakumo is waiting for him. Now with no place left to run, Sakikabara tries to use a scalpel and kill Yakumo as well but gets overpowered easily. Yakumo is then confronted by his father. On the rooftop, a blonde man tries to tell Yakumo once again what he has been saying all along. The truth behind humans is darkness. Even law-abiding citizens will kill without hesitation if it means they and their families can survive. Upon hearing this, Yakumo claims that his father was the one who tricked Sakakabara, but the man refutes this, stating that all he did was give him an opportunity. Sakakabara was the one who decided and acted upon his impulses. Soon, Godu, Haruka, and the others arrive at the roof while Yakumo tests out his theory. Using only his left eye, he confirms that his father is nothing but a ghost. Suddenly, Miyuki jumps in from another roof. Holding a gun, she aims at the onlookers and shoots. The bullet penetrates straight into Godu's abdomen, causing him to scream out in pain and collapse on the floor. Upon seeing this, a greater deal of hatred arises inside Yakumo, and this is exactly what his father wanted. In this moment of weakness, the blonde man used his shadow to take over Yakumo's body. As the others watch, not knowing what is happening, Miyuki chimes in and explains that two souls cannot coexist within one body. This is the same principle she took advantage of in her escape from prison. However, there is a way to overcome this barrier. According to her, if the host and the dead soul are on the same level, it can allow the ghost to take over the host's body completely. And that is what Miyuki and the blonde man wanted along. The blonde man, born with emotions of despair and enmity, will take possession of his son's body, who also harbors the same enmity after learning how his uncle was betrayed by humanity. Not long after, Yakumo stands up, but it is seen that both of his eyes are blood red. This leads Miyuki to believe that the potion has worked. As she moved closer to him, delighted and overjoyed to once again be able to touch him, the blonde man's ghost gave her a tight hug. Nevertheless, it is seen that Yakumo is still in control of this body. Using her agility, she is able to restrain Miyuki and snatch away the gun from her. It is seen that he was using his uncle's contacts and used them to deceive their enemy. Nevertheless, Miyuki manages to free herself and picks up the scalpel Sakikabara used to kill Yakumo. But the injury derails Godu's progress. Despite having a gunshot wound in his gut, he tackles Miyuki, enabling Ishii to grab hold of the gun she was using. As such, he points it towards Miyuki, but she remains unafraid and bears her fangs towards Yakumo. But soon, she breaks down. She asks where on earth her master is when suddenly she sees the ghost of the blonde man behind Yakumo once again, this time on the verge of disappearing. Even in this state, the man tries to mock Yakumo, claiming that he will one day succumb to the darkness since they are connected by blood. However, Yakumo corrects him. His father is not this wretched spirit. Rather, it is Sato Ishin, the man who raised him to be who he is now. To prove his point, he heads towards Sakikabara and tells him just how much animosity he holds for what he did to his uncle. However, he is also a victim. Upholding his uncle's last wish, he agrees to sign the consent form for organ donation in order to save Yoshiko's life. However, in exchange for her operation, Sakikabara must turn himself in. Not wanting to live in this cycle of hatred, he then turns to his father, vowing to never become like him. But the blonde is unchanging. He claims that as a ghost he will one day return and meet with Yakumo again as he will not disappear until his objective is fulfilled. Seeing him disappear, Miyuki also tries to escape but knowing that his beloved care not for her, she drives her car into a lake. Soon after, a funeral is held in Ishin's honor. Kodu sneaks out of the hospital to attend, along with Hada and Ishii and meets with Miyagawa and Hijikata, who are already there. As they gather, Hada points out how the blonde man never commits a crime himself. Rather, he just appears and coerces weak-willed people into doing the crime. As such, Hada deems him the cluster of human sin. Following the funeral of Yakumo's uncle, an unexpected discovery awaited him. His uncle's spirit lingered, unwilling to depart from the realm of the living. However, through heartfelt persuasion, Yakumo managed to convince his uncle that both he and Nao would be well cared for and surrounded by a loving family. Relieved, the uncle finally departed, finding peace at last. As this chapter ends, everything slowly reverts to normal. Godu is now acting as a diligent father to Nao, having quit smoking, and also begins reaching home at a reasonable time to spend some time with her. Hata is still the weird creepy body dissecting loving doctor. Ishii has become more accustomed to this department and is slowly taking over Godu's recent slack. Haruka and Yakumo contoured their adventures, helping the students of their university with their supernatural problems. 